Hi everyone and welcome back to NotFlow. So in the last tutorial we saw together the benefit of actually using masks to isolate certain effects and to add different colors. At this point we have a great understanding of noises and masking so we can get to the next stage when we will create a full high field from scratch. I'm pretty excited about this one so let's start. <music> Let's create our geo node and inside I will create a height field. Next I want to add a noise, I will connect it. I want to change the type to worldly cellular 1, the amplitude to 360 and the offset to 20, 0 and 300 respectively. Next let's create a height field distort by noise. I will only change the amplitude to 40 and the element size to 220. Then another height field noise, I want to connect it and change the amplitude to 10 and the element size to 20. So we are adding some more high frequency details. using the noise knowledge of last video, let's now create some masks. I will create the mask by feature, I will change the minimum to 35 and the max around 60. And let me introduce the height field slump node. The height field slump will create a type of erosion that moves unstable piles of debris into more stable configurations and it will also affect the mask layer as you can see over here. It will also give us some interesting layers. I will now create a height field remap, I will connect it and I want to remap my floor layer. I will then click on compute range. And I will set the output max to 1 to normalize my values between 0 and 1. And I will now create a height field mask clear. And all of this setup is the one we use to create our flow mask. Let's now continue by creating another height field mask by feature. I want to keep mask by slope, but in this case I want to change the minimum to 0 and the maximum to 45. Then I also want to turn the mask by direction, changing the goal angle to 136 and the angle spread to 180. Now because I want this mask to be called slope, I will create a copy layer as we saw in the last lesson and I will name this one slope in order to clean our mask visualization. Then I need my last mask, so I will create another height field mask by feature. I will connect it and I will only change the minimum to 0. And then in mask by curvature, I will change the max to 0.5 and because I'm not getting so much data out of it I will just move this one to the center until I have something that works for me. Lastly I will need to rename this one too so I will duplicate my copy layer and this one will be my picks and I will conclude my masking with the height field mask layer. I will visualize the result with the HF visualize. I will compute range. If it's not updating I will just press ctrl T to refresh my viewport. I will then change my first layer to picks, my second one to slope and third one to flow and as you can see we already getting some pretty interesting patterns. I will disable my color and I will go back to my last I feel noise. I will make some space and I will create a height field remap. I will connect it, let's visualize it and let's compute the range. I will just reframe the height of the overall terrain to making it from 0 to 300. And with this ramp I can remap my ground to make some more interesting features. For now I just want to create one controller over here and that should be 0 0.25, 0 0.25 in value 2 and then another one that should be a position 0 0.4 but in this case I want it to be lower so I will lower it to 0 0.27 and as you can see this creates a ridge running along the base of the mountain. It's finally time to erode our terrain so I'll create a, an HF erode. Make sure you're on frame 1 as this is time dependent. Visualizing it. I will then go into the visualization tab and I will compute the range and then I want to press play to watch it erode and I will stop around frame 15. So 15 is fine so I can just write here 15 and I can check the freeze at frame option. At this point we could go on top and change the grid space into something like 1 and press enter. Now our terrain will have double its resolution so it will take a while to compute. Let's go here and let's visualize it. That looks great and now let's erode it and that's a way more interesting result. It's finally time to add some scatter. Something to notice is that we have way more layers now that we can use for color or shaders later. For now I will just disable the visualization and I will continue by creating a height field mask by feature. As I want to create a mask for my scatter. I will change this one to 0 and this one to 50 and I will then enable the mask by height. Over here I will set the minimum height to 70 and the maximum to 85. In that way we can isolate the parts when we want our trees. We can create a height field scatter. I can now connect my A road into my first input and my mask in my second input. Let's visualize it and it's a little bit hard to see but you have some points over there. Now because I don't want this one to output my terrain I will just disable keep incoming terrain and also we have a lot of points so I will add another zero over here into the coverage. I will just create a labs quick 
basic tree and here it is as you can see it needs a curve so over here i will create a line i want my line to be vertical as it should be by default and i want to change the length to three by visualizing the tree we can see we have a basic pattern although i don't really want the leaves for now so i can go here into the leaf menu and i can prune all of them now these are all separate pieces as you can see if we scatter all of these it will break so i need to create a pack node this will merge everything in just one piece and it will be represented with just one point and just before the pack i can add a color and i will make this one brownish let me now connect all of this into the head scatter and let's visualize so i changed the background so it's easier to see and you should have all your trees scattered correctly although i really think they are too small so i will change this line length to something like 10 that's better but as you can see some of them are breaking so let's go into the head scatter and i want to uncheck the match normals with terrain in this way they will all point up and i can randomly change the up to add some variation something like 6 degrees works fine i will also randomize the yo to 120. over here we are randomizing the scale between 0.5 and 1.5 i think 0.5 it's a little bit too small for our tree so i want to randomize it before 0.8 and 1.5 i think that's perfectly fine let's now create some null node this one will be my scatter and this one will be my terrain I can now make them black, select all of them and just create a final merge. Visualizing everything together, you should have something like that. Don't worry if you see cubes, it just you the ways to actually optimize the viewport so you don't have everything lagging a lot. You can also change these settings if you if your computer is more performant over here. By pressing D, I can go into the optimize tab and I can limit my scene to something higher than 50 million. So let's say 70. As you can see, most of them will disappear as now the maximum limit for polygons has increased. In my case, I will leave it as 50. I think is perfectly fine the last step will be to convert your height field to geometry just by plugging it in so if you get close i can press shift and w and as you can see it's made of polygons so if you notice now all the layers that we had before are being converted into point attributes and in the next lesson we'll see how to leverage the power of these point attributes to actually change the color and shade our terrain so i really hope you enjoyed this lesson i really hope you learned something new if you did please leave a like and subscribe as this really motivates me to create new videos and i know that you guys are liking the content so thank you for sticking by until the end and i will see you in the next one thanks